We're here talking today with Andrew, who has been a teacher in Dublin for more than two decades and also is very active in the teachers union, it's the ASTI, right? Sure. Um, and you've served on the executive board of that and most recently helped to found the group Teachers for Palestine. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, if you don't mind, first of all, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us sitting down here. Um, do you mind starting off just a little bit of general background information? What brought you into teaching and also to getting involved with the teachers union? Okay, so I think it's important to start and say that I am a member of the ACI. I wasn't bored from speaking today in a personal yeah. capacity. So yeah, of course. I'm not necessarily reflecting the, the views of the ASTI. But um, well, you're going back a long time now. Uh, Why I got into teaching in the first place, I can, I can, I can hardly remember at this stage of teaching so long. But uh, no, it, it, it was, it was sports. Growing up, I, I always, just, I love sports. I love being active, uh, keeping fit. I saw the value that I brought uh, to my life and to, to, I suppose, to all the friends who I grew up with who were playing sport and so on. So, I guess I just wanted to go in down the educational route of, of physical education to hopefully. Uh, have some kind of an impact on, on you know teenagers lives uh, in terms of sport and trying to get them into this kind of lifelong habit of staying fit and healthy you know yeah that's really why and how and about the that. sorry <laughs> Go ahead. how about the union when, when did you first get involved with that um i actually first got in, i done the typical you know um young person having a job going out you know having the crack of all the rest of it um and, and, and I, I, I it was only really when they cut the pay of new entrants it was in 2010 2011 that they, they cut the pay of those who would be coming into the profession would get a, a totally different salary than the ones who are currently in it and that i kind of became even it, it, it didn't affect me but i i knew that there's something not right here and um, so i kind of got involved, more involved, more actively involved in the teachers' union then uh, from that point and, and, and have been uh, ever since, you know, just kind of generally trying to protect our, our pay and our conditions and, and the education system that we have, you know, because there is various attempts to, to change bits and pieces of it, you know. Definitely. Some of them are good, absolutely, um, but some not so. Yeah. So what are some of the issues now that you're seeing come up in, in the union? Um, at the moment, it's it's all about the pay deal, the new pay deal, as as it always is every couple of years. They they, they bring up these new kind of pay deals, um, um, so it, it at the moment it's all about that. Um, but unfortunately, once you um, enter into these pay deals, they keep getting voted for. Um, it kind of silences in effect because there's an industrial peace clause, and, and you know you don't really fight for anything else, etc. The union kind of kind of goes flat. So where the union, where it really does work well then is looking after teachers' contracts, etc. and so on, um, and, and kind of local school-based issues where teachers' time pays be changed without permission, but all these, these kind of things, the union works really well. But I suppose in terms of activism within the union, um, once the deals are signed, really, uh, yeah. nothing much happens. So at the moment, there's a deal coming up, there's a lot of discussion at union meetings all about it, etc. and so on, so mm. yeah. And of course the curriculum new changes to the leave insert that they're proposing mm -hmm. to bring in. So when you go to union meetings now, a lot of the discussion is around uh, the new leave insert and changes to that and people giving their opinions one way or the other. Right, and trying to kind of shape the future of that. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. So switching to your role as a teacher, um, what impact do you think that teachers can make on students' lives? And, and also what role the school in and of itself play in, in a young person in a child's life? I think it's vital, um, school. Um, it's, uh, we were talking outside and I was saying, it's kind of a place where it should be kind of a safe zone, uh, especially in this day and age where you have so much social media and information flying around that you know, young people and indeed adults don't know what's right, what's wrong, what's true, what's not. Um, so I think when you have a place like a, an education, like a school where, you know, everything that's taught, in, I suppose, in terms of subject material and, and so on, is grounded in scientific evidence and fact, I think that's really important, especially in this day and age. And there, has, there is attempts to change uh, education away from that, uh, as in 
move knowledge to the side and kind of bring in skills based things. And it, in my opinion, it's all for you know for jobs for companies. I you know to make these skills. You can communicate well. You can work well with others and, and you know, critically think. Um, well, I don't know how you critically think things when you know nothing about them. Um, right. But so you remove the knowledge, but teach critical thinking. It's a bit strange. And the idea is that you know these twenty first century skills. You don't need to teach knowledge anymore because. Um, you could just Google it, but sure we can see the damage that that can do on social media and Google and people are not necessarily finding out the truth. So I think schools have a huge role to play in that, um, and that's just in terms of people's knowledge and awareness of what's going on. But I think also socially, um, you know, uh, kids are, are, are interacting with other children. Those other children might have different opinions than them, they might have different backgrounds than them, different cultures than them, uh, and it's good to be able to share all of that uh, instead of living in little bubbles here and there. So I think it's really important to kind of place where kids come together as a community and, and, and see all the, the variety that's out there in terms of opinions and everything else. You know. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree as a former teacher myself that the many different roles that a school plays in a child's mm -hmm. life, like for each child is going to be different, but um, it fills so many different gaps you know, that maybe they're not getting at home or they're not getting outside. Mm -hmm. um, and so then that brings me to your um, activism and raising awareness about Palestine and what's happening in Gaza. And I wonder, as a teacher, you know, when you see what's happened to the schooling system in Gaza, the fact, first of all, that students have been out of school since October, mm -hmm. not a single child has been able to return to school and also the continued targeting, you know, we see so many um, schools being directly hit by bombs, by missiles, um, even when people are sheltering in them, and, and the collapse of that kind of educational infrastructure. As a teacher, how does that make you feel, and, and what impact is that going to have on the lives of, of the kids that are in Gaza? Uh, well, I don't know how it can't have an impact uh, as a teacher, because you're working with teenagers, I am personally, we have primary school teachers are working with younger kids, Montessori teachers with younger kids again, um, and I don't know how watching something like that unfold on our screens that we can stay silent or, or can pretend like it's not happening and just carry on. Um, and that's, I find it's an extraordinary uh, if teachers can do that. I personally can't. Um, it's just, I, I don't know whether uh, it's something that's inside as a teacher, you know, but it's just, it's, uh, it's, it's very, very difficult uh, to, to not say something and not to help and not to try and do all you can to, to help prevent that. But I mean, it's, it's nothing new, as, as we all know. It's, it's been going on um, in, in Gaza and in Palestine for decades. Um, um, and, and one of the, me the things that Palestinians hold dear is their education, and they are very very good at it. I mean, the amount of highly, highly educated people coming out of Palestine is incredible. Um, and that, given the situation, given the occupation, given everything else, they're still managing to achieve this. Uh, and I think there is a certain uh, element that doesn't like that and, and, and wants to stop that. Uh, and so that's why you have young children being arrested, uh, held at a trial for six, seven months. That is six, seven months out of the education system. Mm -hmm. That's why you have um, the Israeli uh, government trying to influence, or not influence, dictate uh, the curriculum uh, in, in large parts uh, of Palestine. You have teachers being arrested for teaching about the Nakba and teaching about things in the past. Um, so there's been this constant attack uh, on education uh, in Palestine. And, and many of us in the Union have been speaking about this for years. Um, and we always planned on setting up a group like Teachers for Palestine in the past where we were just kind of highlight, of course, what's going on, but also to um, to create links between the, the, the children in Palestine and our children here to, to uh, linking schools and school twinning um, and all of these kind of things um, and education in Ireland around Palestine because it's not in our history books, really, you know, maybe a paragraph, three or four sentences. Um, so, you know, we... we but then again, when this all happened, October, post October 7th, um, it was just kind of kick-started more and more, and there were seen this horrific 
uh, images on our scene, so we, we just felt that we need to try, and we have to try to do something. You know, right. and that's why we kind of set up this group. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit more about the background of what went into um, forming Teachers for Palestine, um, the purpose of the group, what are some of your goals, and really like how you put it together? Okay, so basically, couple uh, of us, I guess, uh, myself, Conal, uh, Brian, a few others, um, we, 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 just, we, we were looking at this, as I said before, uh, and it just happened. Uh, we were kind of, where do we go with this? How do we kind of create these cultural links? Because some of us have been to Palestine, and it's an amazing country, amazing people, and that should be shown. Um, so, you know, how do we create these links? And then, and then of course, everything happened in October 7th, and then there was just an onslaught and an onslaught, and we said, well look, now this thing that's been on the long finger, we need to, right. we need to enact this now, right now. Uh, and one of the main, I suppose, um, things for us that made us to take this action was when people weren't saying anything. Yeah. Uh, you know, there was a few activists online that you would expect to say something. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, but in our staff rooms and schools, there wasn't much being said about it. You know, there was the odd one person who has a passion for Palestine or whatever would be saying things, and the rest was kind of silent and just staring into their lunchbox, you know. And then when um, you'd have, you know, even then when we, we would try and do something on the issue, we were hearing stories of principals saying, you're not to do anything like that, you're not to do this, you're not to do that. And we're kind of, why, why is this happening? So anyway, turns out from talking to people, uh, they would tell us, the staff and yeah. teachers would tell us, I really want to do something, but I'm not confident enough in my own knowledge of the situation. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of really what started Teachers for Palestine then, is like, there is an absolutely massive knowledge gap uh, from teachers, from principals, from everybody, uh, because we've been told for decades, this is complicated, etc., etc. It's not in our history books, we weren't taught about it in school, we're taught about nearly everything else in history, but this just for some reason is, is not there. Um, so we decided that we, maybe we should start running a few workshops uh, on, on Palestine and so on. And then other people said that they wanted to get involved and then it kind of just grew and grew and grew from there. And now we've a big, big group of teachers uh, on, on WhatsApp who are trying to coordinate and organize all of these things. So our goals, I suppose, have grown from that of um, just having these information meetings for teachers about Palestine. So we, we, we moved, we're still doing that of course, but such was the demand that we couldn't, we couldn't facilitate Zoom meetings because there was so much demand to mm -hmm. come uh, to these information meetings. So we decided just to do, I suppose similar to this, was to do uh, YouTube kind of videos and, and post them and then people could, could watch them and so on. Um, but then we have the whole twinning of schools, which you want to do, obviously that is not happening at the moment in Gaza and so on, uh, which is terrible. Uh, and it's kind of that is one of our longer term goals okay. has been pushed back. Um, we're trying to produce resources for schools because we've been told that there's, you know, what can we use to, right. to, to teach students, to teach people. So we're now trying to create those resources, but not only the resources, like we're trying to link those resources to learning outcomes that are already in the curriculum. So teachers can say, well, that fits here. I can teach that here, you know, so they can, when they're, when they're planning their, their lessons or whatever they can include little bits of Palestine here and there and um, that that is linked to to the curriculum and um, we're also of course we're involved in activism so we're looking at where we attend all the protests and uh, we have our banners there and uh, speaking out against what's happening currently at the moment uh, we are trying to get um, be, uh, make our schools apartheid free zones and um, so we are working uh, with some of the, the, the trade unions and that um, and just trying to get that idea that schools don't buy any more uh, equipment that's on the, the BDS list um, uh, going forward. So we're not telling teachers to throw out all their computers and throw out everything that you've already bought because that's not going to happen and schools will be left without things. But it's, it's from this point forward, right. can we make it school policy and boards of management that we don't purchase anything that's contributing to Departed, um, yeah. and so we, we were trying to push for that. That is another kind of area, I suppose, of our, our activism uh, yeah. in schools. So, yeah, yeah. there's just some of what we're, we're trying to do, you know. Yeah. 
it's it's a lot of really important work and there, there's so many different threads i want to follow yeah, in yeah, what yeah. you said so yeah. i'm trying to organize um first um one thing that you mentioned that really strikes me is you said that it's palestine and palestinian history um or anything about the current situation isn't in the irish history books and and that really strikes me because there is so much shared history between Ireland and Palestine with, you know, British colonialism and the, really the overlap of, of the administrators, I'm talking like the colonial administrators and, and so many of those systems that, you know, why do you think it is that even with that deep shared history, that tangible, you know, there are documents proving that, you know, that th there was so much overlap during the colonial period. Um, why has it been left out of the curriculum? I honestly don't know. Um, I've we've taught long and hard about this. Um, not expert enough to to draw any conclusions. Uh, yeah. Is is it just that? Uh, is it an oversight? Is mm -hmm. it that people generally didn't know the history because you know it's right. great nowadays when we have all the information at our fingertips, right. etc. But is it that it just was overlooked? Is it the uh, influence of the way this Irish, the American and Irish ties, as mm -hmm. so many people with, with America with Irish backgrounds, is, that, is it something to do with that? I, I don't know. I'm not going to point fingers. I, I don't. I, I genuinely don't know that. But I think the most important thing is that it isn't there, and mm. that needs to change. Uh, right. And we need to, to do something. And it's not just history. It's like it it fits in so many other uh, subjects like i often people on social media will comment whether you should just stick to teaching your subjects and not be worrying about what's happening in palestine and teach the kids the the academic subject well it literally fits in nearly all the academic subjects in history right. it's in geography when you you're talking about the foundation of countries and you could look at the borders uh, and how it's diminished and diminished you could you when they're talking about migration there's there's forced migration uh, it fit it literally fits in in a huge amount of the, the the subjects the academic subjects in school so um that's kind of what we're trying to do and i'm not saying we want to just barrage everybody with palestine right. and the whole curriculum should be palestine but it should there it's 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 it should be there somewhere um, uh, even if it's in small little bits that people can refer to when they're mm. talking about the different areas uh, in, in their subjects, you know? Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I fully agree that it connects to so many of the issues we see both historically and, and today. How, how has the response, response been from the teachers' union? Um, are they supportive, do you think, of this, or more hesitant to kind of push what... Some, I don't, but some people consider it to be a controversial um, issue. Yeah, um, no, I think the, the teachers' unions have been quite good. Um, yeah. The INTO are doing really good work. That, that every time we go to a, a demonstration um, in terms of the last number of months, the INTO have been there. The INTO mm -hmm. have a Palestinian ambassadors group set up to specifically look at, at these areas. They've been very active in the uh, apartheid free zone but within their own union and they're, I know I believe they're talking about some way of, of implementing that in schools or trying to implement that in schools um, at an official level. Uh, the TUI again they have been at um, a lot of the protests and uh, we mm -hmm. see we see their banners there and, and they've, they've called members to it. Um, in the ASTI my own union um, we have a, a rule five um, which doesn't allow any they say political or sectarian topic to be raised mm. um, at any uh, people have argued that it's humanitarian etc and so on um, and it's it, but uh, for some reason um, they won't back this uh, yeah. and 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 not any or any kind of international right. uh, political thing they won't they won't put their weight behind mm. it etc etc and so on because of of um, of the rule five you know mm. so I understand so it's not just this, but any similar type of topic, they wouldn't touch it. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think in my, in, in off the top of my head, did, did they uh, in the past? And I, I can't, I don't, I don't mm. think, I don't think they have. Yeah. Um, they, they, may, they have mentioned in the past about the Ukrainian issue, mm -hmm. um, but I think they had, and they had a webinar on it, but I think that was more from the point of view of, um, Ukrainian students come in right. here and to help teachers how do we yeah. how do we speak to deal with the, the, some of the trauma they may have been through okay. or, or whatever uh, so it's kind of uh, from that respect rather than uh, mm. 
the war needs to stop or whatever, you know. So it wasn't a, a kind of a taking a stance one way or the other. So that's where we, where it, I don't necessarily, I don't speak in a personal capacity. I don't agree with that interpretation at all. Uh, mm. I believe, uh, given as you just outlined a second ago, the attacks on education, the amount of students being killed, the amount of teachers being killed, and not just killed, injured, serious injuries, mm. schools being destroyed. Um, it, I, it's um, it's every teachers union should be screaming from the hilltops that mm. this needs to stop and it needs to stop now. You know. Do you think teachers themselves feel that they? have the academic freedom to raise these issues in a way that aligns with the curriculum in their classrooms or do they feel that they're under more pressure compared to talking about other similar or related topics yeah that it, i don't personally feel it um, yeah. and again it, it, it is all school dependent right um, so some teachers are doing amazing work they're having uh, there's flags up in the school they're having i've seen that they have whole sections of their library uh, mm -hmm. dedicated to this and then palestinian things they have yeah. they have um in the lobby of their school i've seen um where they come in and you know these kind of uh, poll, not a poll, what's the word I'm looking for? A petition okay. for a ceasefire so the students yeah. can sign a petition for the ceasefire and what's going on and they have kind of information about what's happening up um, so there, there is places where, where this is happening and, and there's been really uh, good work done we see this schools, i seen um, it was was it Belfast, uh, this school uh, that had the whole BDS and they were putting the Palestinian sticker over the, the HP laptops mm. and the, the Siemens equipment and stuff like that. So there is schools that are fully behind this. The schools in Kildare where they're waving the, the flags outside the school in the morning time and so on. So there is schools absolutely that are there. But equally, we're hearing that principals are calling people aside, telling them not to speak about this not to speak about that, even in the context uh, of their subject. Uh, mm -hmm. They're saying like things, there was, there was complaints in, there was this in, there was that in, uh, and so on. So there is absolutely an element of mm -hmm. people trying to say, we're not touching this with a barge pole. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it is very much school dependent uh, right. and, and so on, yeah. Right. Um, and then I guess related to that, and I'm sure it is also school dependent as well, but has there been pushback negatively or support positively from parents and families um, around these initiatives? Um, I haven't heard. Yeah. I, I honestly haven't heard any uh, pushback from parents. I've heard, as I said, some people have reported too, is that there might have been complaints in um, from some parents saying that teachers teaching this shouldn't be teaching it, etc. Mm. etc. should be sticking to the script and the mm. usual um, kind of things. But not so much. No, I, I haven't heard a huge amount of complaints. Um, yeah from parents um, and so on. Um, so, but again, I suppose that's because Irish society is pretty, yeah. you know, it's overwhelmingly in, in support of uh, the Palestinian people and against the atrocities that are happening there, you know? Yeah. Um, this is something that, you know, I like to ask everyone that we have these conversations with because I, I get a lot of really great information and like, why is that to you? Why is there stronger support here? So like, for example, I'm from the US and, Teachers certainly, under no circumstance, have the capability to openly discuss these kind of issues. And if they did, the repercussions are much more severe than, mm. than what I've seen here. Mm. Um, so if you could just speak a little bit to that about you know, the solidarity between Irish people and, and Palestinians and the Palestinian cause. I guess it goes back to, like you said, uh, at, at the... the uh, the very beginning in terms of uh, we we were an occupied nation ourselves mm. and still are you know people that are in the north uh, of the country um so there there's still and that's only recent history so that's still right. there it's still a nation is and again if you want to talk about education it goes back to we learn about that in schools constantly it's in mm. all our curriculum it's in our history books it's everywhere about the occupation of ireland and the rebellions and everything else that happened so uh, it's it, it's there uh, and I guess that's why there is that connection um, mm -hmm. with the Palestinian people and the Palestinian the Palestinian cause um, right. and you're right uh, about international because it, Teachers for Palestine we, we have links with lots of other groups who similarly to us have set up um, around 
the world from Switzerland, South Africa, Australia, um, you know, and again in, in America, there's four or five, or the United States, there's, there's three or four groups there, uh, and they're telling us the same stories, uh, like serious repercussions for teachers um, for speaking out, and serious repercussions for students yes. who have said anything and. Students yeah. been suspended from school indefinitely, uh, pairing review because they said something that we should help the people of Gaza or something. Um, so um, it, it, I, I've seen that some horrific um, cases, and 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 on Australia too, I believe it's it's very mm -hmm. similar, very similar uh, repercussions for teachers and students or anybody in the school system yeah. uh, who speaks out. Um, I guess it's probably down to their own history and mm. their own country's relationship with Israel and the occupying powers right. and all the rest of it. So, Do you mind talking a little bit about yourself? Like what made you first really aware of this? Um, and you traveled to the West Bank, am I right? Yeah. So what made you, what was your motivation behind that? Um, so I, I've kind of always been interested in, I, I've grew, I grew up in, in a household that was always kind of pro-trade union and, mm. and, and, you know, all the various different issues. Um, so I, I've always had this kind of draw towards the situation in Palestine. And I've always been interested in it and we always spoke about it uh, with mm. friends at the union meetings, etc. and so on. Um, so we went we decided you know we were going to go uh, out to the west bank and it's life-changing uh, from two respects mm -hmm. one you fall in love with palestine the culture the people it's amazing uh, never met and i've traveled as a teacher summers off and all yeah. that traveled the world been to asia been to everywhere south america everywhere uh, i i i I would struggle to find the people that are as warm and as welcome uh, as the Palestinian people when we were there. Um, yeah. It was amazing. Um, like you just, they just could not do enough for us. Everybody wanted to have us for dinner. Everybody, you know, this kind of thing. Um, but then, of course, the other side is the checkpoints, the shock. The, we had soldiers come on our bus, point the machine gun mm -hmm. at a, a young guy. He was only 17, 18, point the machine gun straight in his face and told him um, there's no such thing as um, Palestine. There is only Israel. Uh, and this this is the kind of treatment that we were getting as white, uh, you know, um, right. as white Irish people traveling around on a minibus right. boxing, um, uh, you know, and our driver got awful treatment. Um, and as much as we wanted to say something back, mm. um, we we couldn't to the soldiers. And it wasn't because we feared for ourselves. It was because it was the driver. Yeah. What, what's going to happen if we speak out and we give these soldiers lip? Right what's going to happen to right. uh, him and his family. Uh, mm -hmm. So, and that just shows how bad it is out there, you know? Um, so yeah. it's, uh, yeah, life changing. Yeah. Mm. Thank and, you. and then we took that into, into, we took that back with us. And that's why when this happened, we said, look, as a group of teachers, there's an attack on education. We, people mm -hmm. need to know these things. They need to know what's going on, uh, you know? What would you say to either to teachers or to parents, you're a parent yourself, maybe their kids want to know, they've seen something on the news, or mm. their parents, you know, as parents or teachers, want to have age-appropriate conversations with young people about what's going on. What kind of advice would you have for that? Um, it is difficult. I, yeah. I, I have a seven-year-old myself, um, and... It, 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 at, at a young age, I, I think if teachers are looking to what, how do they approach mm. it, or, or even parents, I would say you, you don't necessarily have to approach the horrors uh, mm. uh, of what's happening out there now. Um, but I would say you were kind of doing your bit, if you want to look at it that way, by just teaching them about Palestine, that right. it exists. You know, right. learn the flag, learn about the, the watermelon, colour them mm. in, you know, and have these conversations about there's these lovely people out there and so on, etc. Mm. and so on. And then as they get that bit older, you can mm. talk about maybe the occupation and, and you know, when you know, we, I would often say to my seven, I remember the times we told you in the past about England come over here mm. and what you, they'd be asking about it, you know, when they learn a bit in school and say so when England came over here and told us it wasn't our country anymore, it was now our country and blah, blah, blah this kind of thing. So you kind of, you, you, you work your way up through it right. that way you know um uh, uh, but but again it is very difficult when they might have seen something it, they probably shouldn't when they're six right. seven but they might see something on social media and um, I, I i just said to my seven-year-olds uh, you know that some really bad things are happening to the children at the moment and they're they're really sad you know um, and we want to try and cheer them up so let's 
draw them a picture or let's you know just something along those lines uh, yeah. you know so uh, it, it is a delicate subject and you do have mm. to be um to be wary of that um at the same time it's not i, I wouldn't say just bury it you know you don't mm. you don't just bury it either you know talk about palestine talk about something you know mm. that uh, because they need to talk about it too because they're seeing yeah. it that's one thing that struck me actually at the beginning of all of this in terms of schools and schools weren't saying anything like a lot of the students i'm talking secondary level now a lot of the students are on the same social media that we right. are now of course social media isn't bubble so maybe they're not in that bubble that they are seeing it maybe they're looking at different things but uh, i don't know how anyone who's on social media has managed to avoid seeing some of the images yeah and then they go to school the place that's supposed to tell them information about the world and what's going on and nobody is saying anything about it mm. i just found that extraordinary uh, mm. i think we kind of have a duty right to discuss it with right. them one way or the other Right. Um, you know, and, and uh, yeah, I, I, I firmly still believe that. Yeah. I think that's the point I was trying to make about the young kids, because I get that question all the time. Right. Uh, we get messages saying, I have I've junior infants, or I have two four-year-olds at home, how do I approach it? And I'm saying, well, look, right. if you want to do something about it, yeah. you don't have to tell them about it. You can just... Right you can tell them about Palestine. Right. Tell them about the dance, tell them about right. the food, tell them about the culture, yeah. tell them about the country. Uh, right. And therefore, people want to do... Now, you, now you're doing something. Yeah. Not necessarily, you know, uh, it's not going to stop the uh, right. the bombardment, but you you are playing a role here, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. two things so, yeah. that, you know, to respond to what you're saying first. Yeah, I mean, what kind of message does that send to young people when hmm. they are seeing these things for themselves? They might have some, you know feeling some some you know grief or, or whatever it may be and then to have that completely not reflected mm. in school you know what kind of message does that send them and the other thing that really struck me is you're so right that especially for you know the the much younger kids who maybe you're not going to ha be having those conversations they're not seeing the more graphic images mm. but to teach the culture because this mm. is you know what i've heard from so many Palestinians as well is that they don't want the only image of them to be the worst thing that's ever happened yes. to them and, and just as important is to teach all of that rich culture that you're mm. talking about I think it's a great way to introduce the topic and I, and I think as well it's it's not just it, obviously it's an occupation and yeah. it, it, it's essentially erasing Palestine so we're right. actually doing if you want to look at it as an a revolutionary yeah. act yeah. which is to recognize them and to yeah. let our kids recognize yeah. that this country exists that these people exist uh, so to me, with really younger ones, right. that is enough. And you're, right. you, everyone is doing their bit by doing that, you yeah. know. Um, yeah. The older ones then, yeah, of course, uh, yeah. We, we should be talking to yeah. them about it, you know. And, and of course, because then they have no avenue to express. They have no avenue to ask. Of course they have home. But if mm -hmm. home is saying nothing about it either, um, then we could also, where do we go from here? And you as educators you can offer well look there is solutions mm. there's this on there's this on you could why don't you have a coffee morning in school mm. or why don't you have um i don't know a sale in, in school to raise some funds or, or cycle a ton or play a 24-hour football marathon and raise some funds for the people mm. who are being uh, in gaza um so you could create that i've seen these images I, I don't quite know how to mm. process that we've discussed it in school and now Actually, because what it can bring a lot of people out of the feeling of helplessness mm. and, and being down about it is by actively doing something right. about it. So they, right. they, if, they, if they, they try to do these things within the school environment, and then, of course, you're teaching them about being active citizens, which we're all supposed to teach in schools as well, yeah. uh, <laughs> and so good. on. So it's, it, it kind of feeds into the whole school environment mm -hmm. and the whole curriculum as well. You know. Yeah. So if teachers or parents, they want to um, learn more, where can they get information? from um, your group for, from Teachers for Palestine? Okay, so at the moment, <laughs> it's, um, we, well, you can find us on, on social media. Um, I think it's uh, at Instagram, it's teachers underscore for underscore Palestine. Um, on, on Twitter, it's teachers, the letter for pal. Mm -hmm. um, and you can find us there. You can email us, uh, teachersforpalestineireland at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. We do have another part, but it's kind of, where we asked for help for teach some young students who've mm. been 
thrown out of well not thrown out of well yeah thrown out of Gaza uh, they've managed to escape let's say and they're in Cairo um, so we have set up teachers online with those kids and we are working trying to find we we put out an email asking for teachers um, who would be retired essentially uh, or who have free time during the day to help with this online thing and we've gotten thousands and thousands uh, of emails from all over the world mm -hmm. And many Palestinians who are living in America, who are living in Colombia, who are living Palestinians mm -hmm. from all over the world wanting to help. So at the moment, we're trying to figure out a way of gathering all these people. And we work, we, we talk to some organizations on the ground in Gaza and in Palestine to see if people can lend a hand somewhere. And of course, uh, not that it's, it's the furthest thing from their mind at the moment, I'm sure, education in Gaza when there's bombs falling on you, you're not really thinking about your times four tables, you know, mm -hmm. but it's uh, uh, into the future, can we, can we help in some way um, is, is kind of another arm of what we're doing, but I think the more important stuff is stop yeah. this now, get information out there, and let's start recognising Palestine and, and including it in our curriculum, you know. Um, but in terms of resources, at the moment, because there's so much, as, yeah. as anybody who's kind of an activist in Palestine knows, there's so much going on uh, yeah. between this protest, from BDS, between letters, between, um, it, there's so much going on that our kind of resource making has kind of, not taken yeah. a backseat, but it's slowed down. Uh, yeah. So, but it is our intention to speed that up again and any teacher who is listening to this mm. um, and would like to give help with that and if, or even if in your own school you've already created resources yeah. if you could share with them we, we will have a drive up we're actually working on a website where we oh. can share all these resources with everybody um, uh, and of course linked to the curriculum and, and age group as well so mm. th that's what we're trying trying to do that's know? awesome mm. that, that's really wonderful and i'm sure yeah like you said it's kind of crisis mode right right now yeah. but it will continue to grow over time yes yeah. um is there anything else that you'd like to say anything we didn't touch on any final thoughts um no i i just would like to appeal to, to teachers who are listening to this that yeah. there is a group of us here and um, we do need to be talking about this i think people need to be feeding information back if if principals are not allowing them to speak about this, I think people need to know about that. I'm not saying you need to broadcast it uh, mm -hmm. and put your work in, in, and all the rest of it because let's face it, some people are on different contracts than others, et cetera, yeah. and so on. So, but at least to inform us uh, and to, to realize that there is a lot of people and there's a huge amount of good work yeah. being done uh, and to just, yeah, just, just join us, you know, just join us and speak out. Yeah. And more importantly, go to the next demonstration yeah. uh, and we will see you there and you can you can meet up with us there you know wonderful well thank you so much first of all for all of the work that you're doing um and also for talking with me today with us um it really means a lot and and it gave everyone a lot to think about i'm sure thank you yeah thanks